Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, it's battle report time again. We're going at it again. We've got uh, some Blood Angels taking on some Tyranids. I'm going to be heading up my Blood Angels because that's just the way things are, right? Don't mess with it. Jake's going to be heading up the uh, Tyranids. I'm going to be helping him out a little bit with the Tyranids today as well because... Well, it's not a complicated army, he just doesn't know it well, so I'm going to be giving him a bit of guidance to help smash me up a bit. Um, we're going to be using the Blood of Baal rules um, with a few of the relics and a few of the other little bits and bobs that have come in it. The Tyranids are going to be running as Yorgamunda, because I still think that's just a better one at this point in time. And... Um, but they'll be taking a relic or two and some other bits and bobs, so we'll go through the lists and... Uh, We'll break it down at 1,500 points to see what we got. So, for the Blood Angels, um, we've got... It's not an Outrider. It's not a Spearhead. It's the Elite one. It'll come to me. It doesn't really matter. Um, so, first things first, we've got a Battalion Detachment. So, in the Battalion Detachment, we've got three HQs and the three troops. So, the three HQs are... The Warlord, who is a Primaris Captain. He's got a Power Sword, uh, which he'll also have Master Artisan, which makes that Power Sword damage too, which has been really effective. And he's also got the Decimator Auto Bolt Rifle. So it's pretty much like a higher damage heavy bolt gun that he runs around with. Then next to him, we've just got a Sangri Priest with Jump Pack and Chain Sword. He does what he does. Then over here, we've got Mephiston, the Lord of Death. Now, his psychic powers will be Shield of Sanguinius, Wings of Sanguinius, and the Quickening. And then we've got one, two, three five-man intercessor squads, auto bolt rifles, and power fists on all the sergeants. Then we've added in another HQ that I've just literally finished painting a couple of minutes ago. This is the... Um, Librarian Dreadnought, so he'll be heading off the Elite Detachment, so he's got uh, the two powers he has is Wings and the Quickening as well, just for simplicity, so yeah, it seems to be the go. Obviously only one of them can use it per, per round or whatever, but that's the way I'm going with it. So, in the Elites, he's, we've got the Banner. And we're paying the one command point to make it the Banner of Sacrifice on the Sangri Agent. He's just got a sword. We got five-man Terminator squad, Thunderhammer Storm Shields. Love these guys. They hit hard. They can take hits. Teleport them in. Do your bloody thing. Then up the back here, we've got the big guy, the Redemptor. I've gone back to the Assault Cannon again. I just think it's superior to the, the Plasma, especially when you're moving around the Blood Angel's army. So he's got all Gatling and Storm Boulders. And then also, sorry, going back to the battalion, we've got five-man Hellblaster squad with Assault Plasma. And then we've got a Baal Predator with all the barley Baalness, just barling it up. So, that comes in at 1,500 points. This is my newly finished, so everything is now freshly painted and redone. So, if this army gets its head kicked in, that's because of that. Well, not all of it. Some of it's been in some bat reps before, but this is what I've been working towards with the new 1500 points. So we finally got here. So it comes in at nine command points, but one has been spent on an extra relic. So he's got the relic bolt gun, relic banner. All right, coming over here, we've got some Yorgamunda goodness. I hope I'm saying that right. If I'm not, and I've offended a Tyranid player out there, talk to the hive mind. They'll talk to my guys. They'll get back to your guys. We'll work it out, all right? But in the meantime, what do we got? So, in this one, we've got a battalion and a spearhead. So, let's go through it. HQs. We've got a Tyranid Prime down here. So, he's just got his Death Spitter and Bone Swords. Then up the back, we've got the Swarm Lord. He's in here. He's doing his thing. He's uh, ready to chop stuff up. And then, for troops in that battalion, we have one... Then we have two squads of warriors with bone swords, death spitters, and uh, venom cannon in each of them. Then at the front, 30 man blob of gaunts, um, homogaunts to be specific. And then because of points, and also it's always handy to have a little ripper swarm squad to pop up on an objective or, or do some of that sort of stuff. Um, then we've got an elite's choice of, we've got tyrant guard. And then... 
There's also an exocrine in there, exocrine, exocrine, however you say it. I just call him giant penis gun monster, to be honest. All right, then in the spearhead detachment, we have a walking hive tyrant with venom cannon. Now he's gonna be taking the relic, um, the venom cannon that it just all, always shoots three shots. It's just pretty cool. So make him more shooty, you know. Then three heavy supports, we've got one, two, three Carnifexes with Spore Cysts, Enhanced Sensors, um, Death Spitters with Slimer Maggots, and Heavy Venom Cannons. Jeez, that's a mouthful. GW, where do you come up with these names? So, um, oh, Psychic Power Wise as well on these two. Uh, they've both got, the well this guy here's got Catalyst and Onslaught. This guy's got Catalyst and Psychic Scream, and obviously they both know Smite. Um, so, we'll go through that. I think the, the, um, old Swarm Lord gets an extra one. If that's the case, we'll just roll up one more. Um, yeah, because he's a bit of a, bit of a badass in, well, in every way. He's the Swarm Lord. So, that also comes in at 1,500 points and 9 command points, but he hasn't spent any extra, so he'll be going in the game with his full 9 command points. Alright, so, they're the two armies, we've got a bit of Blood of Bale, a bit of revenge on these uh, Tyranidosaurus Rexes, and uh, roll up a mission, and we'll get back to yous. Alright guys, we've rolled up a mission, we've rolled up Beachhead. I'm, I'm glad we have, this is, I'm, I'm going to be honest, this is one of my favourite missions. I like a missions that make you move forward and uh, go get more points the further into the enemy's deployment zone you get. So for this one, on the Tyranid side of the table, not far from the right hand side, he's put his own in this building here. There's one in the centre here in this ruined chapel looking majiggery jiggery. And then if we go round to the Blood Angel side, in under here they've got one which is I've placed like directly behind that door so that you can sit in front of the building and still shoot and stuff while holding onto it so we rolled up and Jake rolled higher so he got to pick the deployment and he picked spearhead so spearheads pretty much as you can see how far forward the the um, swarm lord is up here the reason he's that far forward is because it's like 15 inches and then pans back to the corners, which is six inches. So it gives you like a, what's that, 12, so an extra three inches forward on both sides, so it really closes that center gap. To give you an idea, he's probably only just outside of six inches of that center objective. So he chose that, and then I got to set up first. So my deployment on the right-hand side, I put the bar predator in here, sort of hiding it in this building, because there are a lot of heavy venom cannons on the other side of the field and can easily delete a battle tank in a round. Then at the front of this building, all the Primaris Marines are along the front, toe tapping the cover to uh, make sure that they they get a bit of cover because these guys do have a lot, the Tyranids have a lot of shooting. All right, and then up the top, we've got Sangri Ancient, and next to him, we've got the Priest, they're up in their rafter up here overlooking them. I think this happens quite a bit when I play my games. I think I do it just for the visual. Go forth and kill stuff. At the back here, we've got the big dread. And then over here, we've got little librarian dread. Then in there, there's Mephiston, the captain. And behind them, we've got the five-man unit of Hellblasters. Because you can't see through that wall there. So I've tried to keep... Um, out of his line of sight of big guns with some heavy stuff. So the guys at the front will benefit from the feel no pain and cover and the guys at the back that you'll be wanting to take the heavier shots, they'll be hidden away a bit. And then in Deep Strike Reserve, I've got the Terminators. All right, coming over here. What's Jakey Boy done? On his right flank, hold his objective. He's got a Carnifex here. Then if we come over here, he's got an Exocrine. If you just look straight down there, he's just gonna go no more Marines, they're all just going to get absolutely flattened. Then in front of him, Tyranid Warriors, Tyranid Warriors and Tyranid Prime. Now remember Yorgamunda is, they get cover as long as they don't run or assault that turn. So he doesn't have to worry so much about buildings and things like that. It means all these big gribblies and things like that have got to two up. So if you're looking to make him a bit more lasty, go with Yorgamunda. 
Next to that, we've got another Carnifex here. And next to him, a giant blob. So he's done the same thing because he can't see through this wall here. He doesn't want a bale predator coming out and just annihilating this entire unit. Then over this side, the other flank, he's got another Carnifex. And then right up front here, we've got the Warlord um, Tyrant in front of him. We've got the three Tyrant Guard. And then in front, we've got Swarm Lord, who's literally just not that far away from these guys at all. So that's the setup. The mission. Um, I currently have first turn. Uh, would you like to seize? No, right, no problem. Give it a roll. <laughs> That's a four, mate. Yep. All right. So it'll be Blood Angels turn one, and uh, we'll see if we can't remove some of this scum that destroyed our planet and all that kind of jazz. And then we had to get saved by the Ultramarines, which was more shameful than getting destroyed by you guys. So whatever. Let's get on with it. Alright guys, end of Blood Angels turn one. I've made a cautious move forward. So everything that was in this building in here has sort of moved forward round to this side here, as you can see. With the Hellblasters just sitting on the doorstep in there. So they're the ones kind of holding the objective and sitting back. This sort of came zooming from around out here and um, he managed to actually get some shots off over here with his heavy boulders and do one wound on that Carnifex. So in here, pretty much all the auto bolt rifles shot over here and killed one unit of warriors, giving me first strike. Then the big guy, the hell blasters, and everything else. Yeah, no, pretty much big guy, hell blasters. Oh yeah, and the decimator here on the main guy. Shot into here. Um, it ended up that he took a heap of wounds on... So, uh, off the, the Hell Bastards, three of them went on here, which took out one of these guys with like three mortal wounds. But then he rolled a heap of ones, and, and the Swarm Lords still end up taking um, seven damage. So, not bad shooting, considering he had the Tyrant Guard doing. Very unlucky on Jake's behalf. He's obviously not dead. He's still right in front of me, so that's not something I really want to contend with. But that's kind of how it is. So, not bad first turn. Cautious. Sort of like, I've uh, been watching a lot of Vikings lately, so it's kind of like all these guys like, Shield Wall! So, what we'll do is, uh, we'll get back to you at the end of Tyranids Turn 1 and see if any of this stuff's still here. Alright guys. Alright guys. End of Tyranids Turn 1. So, what's happened here? There's been a big push forward, so these guys have come forward. This guy's come forward. This guy's stepped to the side. He's holding the objective. This guy stood still because he's more beneficial for just standing still with the shooting and all that sort of stuff. These guys came forward. He's forward. Swarm Lords. This is all the way up in here. And then these guys got a good run and they're right up on the grill of these things. All right. So shooting wise, this guy deleted a full prime RS squad over here, giving first strike and killed another... No, he just deleted one, sorry. Then these guys took pot shots. So pretty much they used their small arms fire to fire at um, guys in units over here. And they killed another Primaris Marine. And then they used their big Venom cannons to fire at the big Dreadnought that was over here. Now between this guy's Venom cannon and the other three um, Carnifexes, they got, I think, something like nine wounds off him. Then... The Carnifex come running in, oh, sorry, the Swarm Lord come running in and he killed the Dreadnought. He didn't roll so well though, like he doesn't have re-roll ones or anything and it actually hurts him a little bit with six attacks. But then he paid for Adrenaline Surge to go again and he ended up finishing the Dreadnought off and these guys in here. The reason the Dreadnought survived a bit longer is because I put Shield of Sanguineous on it. So, good little buff there. He also used Rapid Regeneration to heal himself. So this turn, Jake used an absolute bucket ton of, um, what do we call them, stratagems. He used Rapid Regeneration, then he used um, Adrenaline Surge to fight again, and he also used, I think it's Voracious, so I'm just having a look here, what was it called? Voracious Appetites, what that means allows a monster to re-roll its wounds. So he used a total of... Seven command points this turn. Three to rego, two to regenerate. It's five. There was something else in there. The uh, oh yeah, the rerolls the wound. 
So he used a bunch and uh, he did smash into things. So I'm missing the dread, I'm missing the unit. So he did score some points here. This guy hit back and took a wound off him. Um, I couldn't heroically intervene because the way I've blocked myself in, like I couldn't, he sort of jammed me in there. Like there's not enough room to move these guys out. So the only guy that would have been able to do it would have been the captain. And um, that's all right, because he'll get his turn at it now. So that was Tyranid's first turn. Really good push forward. Fair bit of damage done. Lots of Marines dead and a big Dreadnought. So uh, we'll go on to Blood Angel's turn two and see if we can't kill the Horde. All right, guys, end of Blood Angel turn two. We've had some shenanigans go on, some psychic powers go off, and some other things happen. All right, so we had this thing back up. And shot into here and killed about 15 Gaunts. These guys shot in and killed another couple. I'll just move this building for a second. That's how many's left. Not many. But they're Synapse. So in Synapse range, they are fearless. So they'll stay there. Um, over here, these guys made a run for the center objective. These guys followed them up. Um, and then back here, the big thing was the Swarm Lord is dead. Uh, <sighs> There was two things we tried to do here. So I was shooting for ages. We got rid of the, the hive guard down to like its last wound and then shot a heap of plasma from here, which um, the priest got one of them back up. So they're back up to five. He saved them all and the one that got through went on the um, thing. So all the all the high, uh, sorry tyrant guard are dead. And uh, this guy's just unwounded. Then the, well actually, the Librarian and Mephiston charged Swarm Lord and Mephiston single-handedly finished him off. He got the quickening off. He had like nine attacks. Hitting on twos, re-rolling ones because of the captain and then wounding on twos, re-rolling ones because of the banner. Just brutalized him, even though he had a three up invulnerable save. I think he failed four or five of them and took about nine extra wounds after a few smites went into him as well. So, at the end of Blood Angel's turn two, we've scored three points. So, we are on a total of four for the time being. Now, let's see if we can hold this center against this uh, big horde of guys coming our way. All right, we'll get back to you. All right, guys, end of Tyranid turn two. So, we've had a bit of movement, a bit of shaking, a bit of this, a bit of that. This guy moved forward. Carnifex over here moved forward. Carnifex over here stood still. Exocrine stood still. All of the big guys on this side, Exocrine 2 Carnifexes, shot over into here and obliterated a fair few Intercessor Marines. Then everything in the center here ran in. Uh, the Warriors and everything shot at them as well and cleared them out. So there's no more Intercessors troops in the center. These guys hold the center. This one over here tried to shoot across over here to the Hellblasters, but was unsuccessful with all its shooting. The big guy here, come around this side, and um, he the only psychic power he was able to get off was Catalyst. The others were all shut down by Mephiston and the Libby Dread. So had a fair bit of denial there. He tried to shoot his cannon into this captain twice, and he did get two hits and two wounds, but the captain saved them both. Then he ran in, smashed Mephiston into little itty bitty pieces with his attacks. This captain was uh, then jumped into the combat, heroically intervened. Um, hit hit the guy, only took one wound back off him. Uh, having Catalyst on, 4-up in Von, big tough monster, was hard to do. So I don't have any troops choices left on the battlefield. Uh, Jake actually killed a heap of stuff then. With Mephiston and all the intercessors and that, that was a couple of hundred points of dead going down the drain, big time. So, at the end of this round, he's holding the centre. And he's holding his back here. So he's got four as well. So at this point in time, it's four all. Um, the Tyranids are looking a bit better with all their big monsters, uh, well not all of them, but a lot of their big monsters still fully intact. Um, we've lost a fair bit. So we'll get back to you at the end of Blood Angel turn three when we go into the assault phase and we turn on our power swords and just annihilate these bugs off this planet. All right, we'll be back soon. All right guys, end of Blood Angel's turn three. We've got some stuff go down here and not go down here. It was a bit of a combination. So this tank moved from, he was back here, moved over here, used big guns never tire, so he could fire at full bliss skill because he's uninjured. Um, the Hellblasters all stood still under here. 
combination of the hell bosses and the tank fired into here and killed off all the warriors that were in here. Um, then the priests ran in and cut down all of the homogaunts. And then the Sangri Ancient ran in and he cut down the Tyranid Prime, clearing this out and gaining control of this center. Then over here, the captain stayed in combat with this guy and the Librarian Dreadnought ran in and between the two of them, they only did like five wounds on him. Um, so he's lost six total. I even paid three command points to let the captain fight again and still did, that was like the captain fighting twice and the big guy fighting. Um, still only took two, six wounds. I wanted to get the Dreadnought to fight again, but it was an infantry or biker character, so I couldn't do it. But that netted me another three points for still holding mine and holding the center. So I'm on seven points at the end of this. Um, the other thing that happened is my Terminators come down over here, but they failed to charge. But at least I've put some pressure on him over here. So he's going to have to do something about that because if he doesn't kill them, they're going to come in here and stomp out these monsters. So it gives him something to think about. All right, so... We'll go on with uh, Tyranid's turn three because they're very much still in the game and see what they can do. All right, at the end of Tyranid's turn three, some stuff has happened here, tell you what. So, over here, a couple of these guys are dead because this backed up and this guy backed up. They actually both shot in there and they killed two Terminators. Um, valiant effort, but... They shielded a heap of shots. Get yourself some shields. They're always good. Well, they're not always good. Sometimes you just roll real crap no matter how, what a save you've got. But anyway, over here, these guys sort of shot into the center here, didn't do anything, then charged in. And with all their shooting and charging, they only took two wounds off the priest. Then the priest turned around and ring, 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 four wounds off this guy in combat. <laughs> over here. The combat here, the tyrant did nothing to these guys, but he's down to one wound. But he's still just standing there. He just, he won't freaking die. Feel no pain and a four up in Von on a big monster like that is uh, good. Then he brought these guys out and uh, they've deep struck in right behind my objective. And we all know the noise these little guys make. That's right. That's the official noise of the Ripper Swarm. So, with a lot of stuff just absolutely carnaged up, we're both on seven points. Um, it's a fight for this center. I think the big difference will be now that he's put this behind me because they're a troop's choice. Remember that. And then I've got something going towards his. So, we'll have Blood Angels turn four and uh, see if we can't, as uh, the wise words of Mortal Kombat, finish him. All right, we'll be back, boys. We'll be back. All right, guys, end of Blood Angel turn four. And it is uh, pretty dominant in the center here. So let's have a look at what happened. This thing turned around, looked at the rippers and just went burp. Little rippers were like, Gonskis, done. Then these hell blasters shot over here and killed the, the uh, unwounded Carnifex. Then this guy jumped in and chopped the head off the other one. These two finally finished off the Hive Tyrant. And these guys over here moved forward and failed their charge again. At this point, um, I'm on 11 points and Jake's on 7 points. It's not looking good for him, but with his two monsters left over here, he wants to uh, go for the moral victory and try and kill some stuff. Maybe blow up the Dreadnought or one of these characters here. Maybe get Warlord and just shove it in me face. So... We'll let him do that and we'll get back to his. All right, guys. End <laughs> of Tyranid's turn four. So Jake scored one point for holding this. He's only got these two monsters. And he feels he scored the moral victory by going over here and he blew my freshly painted Librarian Dreadnought right out of his fucking sots. Fucking kapow. He emptied both of these guys into him and just obliterated him into the next life. But at this point, <laughs> uh, it's looking pretty grim. And that's what happens in the grim dark, as you all know. 
So, um, seems he's, he's pulled the trigger and killed my uh, Librarian Dreadnought. I want revenge. So, we're going to go into the next turn and I'm going to try and table him because I want absolute victory. So, we'll see if these guys can get in. We'll see if we can do some more shooting. We need to avenge our freshly painted Librarian Dreadnought. We'll get back to you in a second. Alright guys, end of Blood Angels turn 5. And we have exacted revenge for Sanguinius. We have tabled Jake. And we have held every objective on the battlefield. Culminating, I hope I said that right. In a total of 17 victory points for the Blood Angels and a tabling to the Tyranids, 8 points. So, <laughs> a combination of this guy backed up, so behind him he's holding the objective through the doorway, which is why I put it there, so people could hold it from this. That's why I said it at the start. <sighs> then these guys shot, two of them died from overcharging. They took a heap of wounds off the Exocrine. Decimator took a few more wounds off the Exocrine. This guy ran in and chopped more wounds off the um, card effects and then these guys split their attacks and finished them off. Also holding this objective, I've backed this guy up so he's three inches from this objective here. Alright, so there you have it. It was an absolute domination from uh, the Blood Angels. If only we could have done that on, uh, um, on Baal when we got our heads kicked in and were shamed by being saved by blue smurf people. That's a story for another day though. That's a story for another day. All right, I'm gonna go with man of the match. Once again, the little captain guy here. With he's, he's, he's solid, he gets around, he does his thing. He supports the army from range and up close and also by giving re-rolls. He's, he's pretty good all rounder. I'm really liking him in the list. Honorable mention to the Baal Predator who went through the entire battle unscathed and gunned down hordes of gribbly griblets. <laughs> I asked Jake who he gave man of the match to and he said, there were no men in this army, they were just bugs and they all died. I was like, okay, pretty grim, pretty cool, fair enough. All right, so hope you've enjoyed this one. Uh, we'll get back to the drawing board and uh, me and Jacob put together some more battles. Um, he's actually come up with some ideas looking through some of my armies of some things he'd like to try out that are a bit different. So we'll get back to his with that and we'll go from there. All right, enjoy guys.